Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. And this is question number 10 from the October 2021 International A Level the Edexcel exam for Pure Mathematics P3. And this is the final question on this paper. Uh, this question here is about a curve which has got the equation y equals 1 plus uh, 2 cosine of 2x all squared. And we've got to show that this simplifies or expands to become p plus q cosine 2x plus r cosine 4x, where p, q, and r are constants to be found. Okay, so we've got to take this equation and we've got to express it in this particular form. So, of course, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to expand the bracket. So we have 1 plus 2 times cosine of 2x all squared. So if you square the bracket, we square the first term plus then we're going to multiply these two terms together and then double that that's going to be one times two which is two times doubled which is four times cosine two x and then we're going to square the last term if you square that last term you must square the two that gives you four and square the cosine two x which gives you cosine squared two x all right now this is not quite in the form that we need okay you've got a constant there's a constant there you've got four cosine two x that seems to be fine but this here, we've got cosine squared 2x, and we need to express it in terms of cosine of 4x. So you can see that these are not quite expressed in the right, in the right way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, cosine 2x and I'm going cosine squared 2x, and I'm going to try to uh, express it in terms of um, like cosine 4x somehow. Okay. Now I can see that there's something like this angle is double that angle. So we can kind of guess it's got something to do with the double angle formula. So I'm going to take, I'll write cosine squared 2x and I will, I'll write it first as, let me, let me first of all think of it in terms of um, the identity we know about cosine 2a. Cosine 2a, okay, is, is equal to, um, if you remember the identities, is 2 cosine squared a minus 1 okay and this is based on this is one that's not in our formula book but it's based upon something in the formula book which is cosine a plus b is equal to cosine a times cosine b minus sine a times sine b it's based on that um, identity which is found in the formula book so if you call these both a cosine 2a would be cosine a plus a then this is going to become cosine a times cosine a, which is cosine squared a. And there will be sine a times sine a, which will be minus sine squared a. That's And then this formula, if I want to express this with in terms of cosine squared a, then I can change the sine squared a to 1 minus cosine squared a. Using the identity sine squared a plus cosine squared a equals 1. So this gives me cosine squared a minus 1 plus cosine squared a, which is 2 cosine squared a minus 1. Okay, so that's where this identity comes from. You should know this, but if you forget it, it's quite easy to um, deduce it given this formula in the formula book. All right, so cosine 2a equals 2 cosine squared a minus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that to this. So I'm going to make the cosine squared a the subject of this. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I'll have cosine 2a plus 1. Okay, and then I'm going to divide by 2. So cosine 2a plus 1 is equal to cosine squared a. All right, so basically what I've got is I've got cosine squared a equals cosine 2a plus 1 over 2. All right, now if I compare these, it's like the a is the 2x. This is going to be 2a, which is going to become 4x. You can double the angle. So this will become the same as cosine. Instead of 2x, I'll write 4x, because I've got to double whatever's here. It's got to double over there. Then I'll have plus 1 over 2. So I've now shown that cosine squared 2x is the same as cosine 4x plus 1 over 2. So now what I can do is I can replace the cosine squared x with all of this. So I can say that this is equal to Okay, this is equal to, this is like a side point that I've just, it's like a box that I've put in, in the middle of the thing, but I just, I'll just box it away like this. So I'm going to continue from there, 
and I'm, I can say that now this is equal to basically 1 plus 4 cosine 2x and now instead of and then I've got 4 plus 4 times and now instead of cosine let's get rid of this line instead of cosine squared 2x I can replace cosine squared 2x with all of this so it's 4 times and I've got cosine 4x plus 1 over 2 so now let's see if that gives us what we need so you have 1 plus 4 times cosine of 2x now the 2 and the 4 cancel give you 2 now we're going to be plus 2 cosine 4x and 2 times 1 is 2 so in the end we end up with 1 plus 2 cosine 2x all squared is the same as 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 4 cosine 2x plus 2 cosine 4x and I think that's in the form that they need p plus q cosine 2x plus r cosine 4x constant then something cosine 2x and something cosine 4x so you got p this is your p and this is your q and this is your r so we can say p equals 3 q equals 4 and r equals 2 and there we have expressed it in this form and that's the end of question 10 part a two marks for that it's like a, a bit of work for two marks to be honest but um anyway that's fine okay you have to use this identity basically um you know we're using this identity but we have to recognize basically that um you know we have here 4x is double of 2x so we're going to use a double angle formula 4x is double 2x so we're going to think in terms of double angle formula okay all right now that's question number 10a now for 10b 10b says uh, the curve touches the positive x axis for the second time when x equals a so it it, it turns over there and then it turns over there again when x equals a, as shown in figure 4 the regions bounded by the curve the y-axis and the x-axis up to x equals a are shown shaded in figure 4 find using algebraic integration and making your method clear the exact total area of the shaded regions write your answer in simplest form okay so we've got to find where this curve touches the x-axis okay the second time now it touches the x-axis basically when y equals 0 when y equals 0 it touches the x-axis. So I could use this original form of the equation, which is probably much easier to solve in an equation like this, um, to find the values of x where it touches the x-axis. So let's do that. Let's put 1 plus 2 cosine 2x squared equals 0, because I need to find the value of a, and then I can integrate the, this expression with respect to x. Okay, so 1 plus 2 cosine 2x squared equals 0, which if I take the square root of both sides, I have 1 plus 2 cosine 2x equals 0. And if I make cosine 2x a subject of this, I'm going to make cosine 2x equals negative a half. And then I can solve this equation. Um, I can take the inverse cosine of both sides. So 2x is equal to... Now if I take the inverse cosine of negative a half, let's get the calculator... We have to make sure that we're in radian mode. Why? Because we are using differentiation and we're going to integrate. So we have to have the limits in terms of um, in radian form, radian measure. Okay. So we're going to have cosine 2x equals minus a half. So we're going to press inverse cosine of negative a half. And that should give us 2 pi over 3, I think. Yes, 2 pi over 3. So that's 2 pi over 3. So this is going to be the first value this is when um well no it's not actually going to be the first value because you've got two x there but that's going to be the first solution we're looking for the second solution and then we're going to divide them by two so this is going to actually be pi over three this is the f the first time it hits zero is pi over three we've got to find the second time it hits zero so the the second solution in this uh, cosine in a cosine curve equation the, the second solution is given by two pi minus the calculator solution so that's going to be um, 6 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3 which is 4 pi over 3 so we're looking for this one so we say 2x is equal to 4 pi over 3 therefore x is equal to if you divide by 2 2 pi over 3 so this is going to be the second place 2 pi over 3 that's where we're looking for so we have to basically integrate we've got to integrate the function 
y equals 1 plus 2 cosine 2x to the power of 2, which we, which we also wrote as 3 plus, um, it was 4 cosine 2x plus 2 cosine 4x. Okay, that was the expression when we expanded it. We found it in this form, so we have 3 plus 4 cosine 2x plus 2 cosine 4x. But to integrate with that respect to x between the limits of 0 and 2 pi over 3. Okay, and now when we integrate this, um, 3 integrated with respect to x gives you 3x. 4 cosine 2x, well, you integrate cosine of something, it becomes sine of the same thing. So that's sine of 2x. But then we have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function. So we divide by 2 plus similar kind of thing. This becomes sine of 4x. Okay, but we divide by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 4. And we got the limits 0 and pi, 2 pi over 3. Okay, so now we've got to find the exact value. So we replace the x with 2 pi over 3. So you end up here with this equaling 3 times 2 pi over 3, which is 2 pi, plus 4 times sine, 2 times 2 pi over 3, which is sine of 4 pi over 3, divided by 2. So I can just cancel that there, and I'll write this, oops, I'll write this here as 2, because 4 over 2 is 2. And this is going to cancel with this, gives you 2. So it's going to be plus a half times the sine of 4, to 4 times 2 pi over 3, which is 8 pi over 3, minus, and then you've got to take away. Now if you put 0 in here, it's going to become 0. zero t sine of 0 is 0, and sine of 0, so it's all going to be 0 the second part, so we don't need to worry about that part now. So you're going to have 2 pi plus, now we've got to pi find the sine of 4 pi over 3. So we do sine of 4 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and close that bracket, that gives you minus root 3 over 2, so it's 2 times minus root 3 over 2, plus a half times the sine of 8 pi over 3. So let's change this to 8 pi. That gives you root 3 over 2, so that's going to be root 3 over 2, and so that gives you 2 pi, this gives you minus root 3, and this gives you a quarter plus root 3 over 4, so we end up with, that's going to be 2 pi, that's going to be minus 3 quarters, that's 1, minus 1 plus a quarter, it's minus 3 quarters of root 3, and there's your exact value. And that's the, the uh, area, that's square units, you could say. Find the t exact total area of the shaded regions. So there we have this square units. And there's the answer to this question. And the answer, this is the paper answered P3 of October 2021, the complete paper now. All the other questions can be found in the playlist, which should appear somewhere in this area over here. Questions to do with Trig identities will be found in this playlist. And integration of um, trig, um, trig functions, you'll find the integration, P3 integration, all the P3 integration topics can be found in the playlist here. As I said, the trig identities in this playlist. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and you'll find the other papers from P3 answered also. Um, if you check the uh, description of the video, you'll see my links to P3, P4, M1, S1, P1, P2, and also some IGCSE, um, University of Cambridge CIE paper, uh, papers that I've answered. So you can, you know, free to watch them. Uh, thank you and see you soon.